Good evening. Um, today I'll be doing, I'll be talking about fountain pens in general. I won't be doing a review. Basically, tell you about why I enjoy using fountain pens, and um, if maybe I might inspire some of you to take up fountain pen collecting and using fountain pens as a hobby. So, um, yep, let's uh, get right back into it now. I did ask my wife, uh, hey, give me some pointers about, uh, you know, what I should uh, speak about in this video. And she said, oh, I mean, without even thinking twice, she said, oh, it's just a fetish. <laughs> and um, yeah, th that is actually an interesting thing. Um, in some ways, it is a fetish. Like, uh, you start off with one or two fountain pens, and next thing you know, you have spent a lot of money and you've got a hundred fountain pens and uh, you can't wait to get a few more fountain pens so <laughs> it tends to be one of those things where once people get into it like you know you, you accumulate a lot of fountain pens uh, it's a very enjoyable hobby um yeah i'm not ashamed to say that so anyway um what happened recently is um i've got a He's almost one year old now. Um, when he was around 10 months old, my son Peter, um, he, he always likes playing with my fountain pens. So I've got uh, no idea why. Um, so uh, he got hold of my fountain pen. I must have left it on the coffee table or somewhere. And uh, yeah, he was waving it around. Um, it wasn't a very expensive pen, um, but it was a pen that I liked. Um, wrote very well and so uh, yeah he was waving it around and I didn't think twice of it it's a pretty robust pin and so um, yeah I left to do something my wife was uh, looking after him and when I returned the pin was uncapped and he had ink stains over his clothes and oh, I mean I was uh, <sighs> Oh, you've destroyed my pen. And so, anyway, had a look. The nib was fine, and Peter was fine. He was all happy. And, um, I mean, uh, the reason why I let him play with fountain pens because he doesn't have the ability to actually open the fountain pen. But, yeah, apparently he did. And, uh, well, anyway, so uh, once we made sure he was fine and everything, I got the fountain pen. I started writing with it, and lo and behold, it did not write the way that it used to and oh no <laughs> although I did not like that fountain pen all that much I mean now that it wasn't writing as well as um, it wrote before I was oh no I must get this fountain pen writing the way that it should and uh, yeah so I spent oh, way more money and time relative to what the fountain pen cost trying to get it to write the way um, it wrote um, I bought books on how to repair fountain pens. Had to import that all the way from the US. Uh, bought various tools, looked at it basically under a microscope, um, made sure everything was aligned. Everything that I did, I just could not get that fountain pen to write the way that it wrote before Peter um, yeah, fiddled with it. And. Uh, that actually got me thinking a lot about fountain pens um, and that is one reason why I love fountain pens. Um, a fountain pen is not something that uh, is replaceable like you know every fountain pen has character of its own it uh, adapts to your handwriting to a certain extent you develop feelings towards it and um, yeah I mean it's and it's one of those things that you have to handle with care. You just can't leave it on the coffee table for a 10 month old to fiddle around with it. I mean, it's, um, yeah, you're just asking for trouble. And uh, yeah, it's it's not a throwaway thing. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, that, although a little bit of a sad story, I mean, <laughs> it does illustrate why people love fountain pens. It's, uh, Yep, it is something to behold, it's something to treasure, it's something to look after. It's it's not a throwaway thing like a ballpoint pen, oh, it stops working, you chuck it away, you get another one, you don't think twice. Um, if you get five of the same model, nib size of a fountain pen, they'll all behave differently. And uh, yeah, you like different fountain pens, and yeah, that is one reason why. I like fountain pens. Also, 
like once you get a decent collection of fountain pens um, is part of my collection um, you learn about the different materials that fountain pens are made out of now a critical part of a fountain pen is the nib now nibs are made of many different metals um gold is a popular metal now, the reason why gold is used is uh, gold is relatively non-reactive and uh, well, it's very non-reactive but you cannot use pure gold because pure gold is very malleable um i mean it, it'll bend easily i mean you can not um yeah, no, well, very poor choice for a nib material in its pure form and so you get gold nibs in 14 carat and 18 carat um, I've got uh, like you know the Caran uh, pens are 18 carat if I'm not wrong but uh, yep it is 18 carat and it's a lot more flexible compared to 14 carat but they have designed the nib in a way that uh, yep it it does have a little bit more flex and then you've got pens with 14 karat gold is actually quite uh, popular and then uh, yeah, you've got most uh, cheaper pens they come with a steel nib and uh, I mean some pens like for example this Visconti Homo sapiens um, this comes with a palladium, palladium nib which is a uh, yeah, very interesting choice of uh, material and they all behave differently and so once you start collecting a decent like you know some fountain pens um, you tend to do research on uh, metals and um, like you know even if you don't have a chemistry background you'll you know start learning about the periodic table and uh, how alloys function and um, and so on and yeah but very very interesting and um, I mean, there, there, there is one reason uh, why I like fountain pens. Um, also, like you know, many fountain pens, they're coated with various materials. Like uh, this fountain pen is, um, although this is a gold nib, you might be able to see it's silver, silverish in color. It's not because it's silver plated, but because it's uh, it's got a rhodium plate, and so yeah, interesting. Um, I also have. Uh, have a silver fountain pen it's an Otto hut fountain pen somewhere there it's uh, yeah, the grip section is made out of silver I think and it feels very different to like you know other grip sections that might be made out of stainless steel which uh, yeah it's um, fascinating very interesting all also silver fountain pens they tend to uh, yeah, develop an interesting sheen it's because of oxidation and uh, yeah, again very very interesting um, another major 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 reason why people absolutely love fountain pens is because of inks now with ballpoint pens I mean you'd be lucky if you can get like you know a dozen different colors but with fountain pens I mean plethora of colors um, hundreds and hundreds of blues hundreds and hundreds of greens reds um, e even like you know a gray is not a diluted black I mean true grays are very different from blacks and uh, I mean I found that absolutely fascinating I mean I, I love a nice gray and uh, yeah uh, that uh, I mean I, I don't know of a ballpoint pen that writes in gray also about inks um, fountain pen inks generally don't come in bottles like this I mean this is a plain uh, diamine bottle um, very inexpensive uh, ink very nice ink though it's um, yeah, not uh, saying diamine is a bad brand but uh, I'm a very good brand they make very very good inks um, like I'm uh, look at this bottle i mean this is a mont blanc um nice red i mean what a beautiful bottle i mean people may buy fountain pen inks just because of the bottle and uh, i mean look at that this is a japanese uh, ink it's made by pilot iro shizuku and uh, i mean you just look at it. it it looks japanese to me like you know very 
minimalist, um, clean lines, zen-ish. Absolutely beautiful. Um, let me just show you another one example. I mean, to me, this just looks German. It's, um, you know, it's Pelican, uh, Pelican Elderstein. And, uh, yeah, many other companies, they make bottles, uh, very nice looking uh, bottles. And that would be one reason why you would uh, collect fountain pen inks. Like this is Jay Herba. They, uh, among the more popular fountain pen, uh, oh, they've been making fountain pen inks for forever. I think over a hundred years, something like that. I've got a light right staring at me, so maybe you can't see it, but yeah, very, very pretty bottles. Um, so, yeah, you might say that it is a bit vain buying bottles of ink just because the bottles look pretty. Um, maybe a little bit of vanity is not all that bad. <laughs> well, speaking of that, so... Um, Fountain pens are beautiful. Yeah, I did say it. Fountain pens are beautiful. I mean, I find fountain pens beautiful. I mean, look at this. Um, this is a limited edition M600. Um, Pelican M600. I mean, it's um, reddish color. And I've put um, Rouge Hematite, which is a limited edition ink in it. Uh, blood red ink blood red ish pen I mean, it's just absolutely i mean i just find this stunning uh, um, this is a custom uh, pilot custom 823 and it's a um, it's a demonstrator um, i don't think or maybe you can see the ink inside it and it's got an absolutely beautiful nib it's an 18 karat gold quite a large nib and i mean i just enjoy writing this pen i mean it's uh, it's absolutely beautiful. I yeah, absolutely love it. Like you know, another example. I mean, I'll just show you another. Maybe one more. I mean, this is a Diplomat uh, Excellence A pin. Um, this pin is built like a tank. Like you know, ugh, no wonder the like you know German engineering. It's uh, you could uh, use this as a hammer to drive in nails. I mean, it's just. Ugh writes uh, reasonably well it's a steel nib i mean yeah, you can use this as a fencing weapon it's a beautiful pen and uh, yeah. and then you go into a little bit more exotic pens like uh, this visconti homo sapiens um, the body is made out of lava out of some mountain in europe um, beautiful pen this actually happens to be my favorite pen right now it's um yeah i just love it um, this is an extra fine nib and uh, it is actually very difficult to make a fine nib smooth and this is very smooth it, it just writes beautifully i i just absolutely love it it uh, cost a bit of money but worth every cent in my opinion so yeah, apart from it being uh, a thing of beauty, fountain pens tend to bring out a lot of good things in people. By good things, I mean once you start using fountain pens, you want to improve your handwriting. Just about everyone I know who has fountain pens, they uh, end up buying books on calligraphy and uh, improving their handwriting. And uh, a lot... In fact, most fountain pen people I know write in cursive. And cursive handwriting seems to be something that is, yeah, just going out of fashion. It's, um, I mean, at my workplace, um, everyone that I know that is above 40 years old writes in cursive. Everyone that I know that's under 40 writes in uh, print. And uh, I think that's just an absolutely great loss. Um, I mean, cursive handwriting is just a beautiful thing. And, uh, I mean, a lot of historic documents like um, yeah, the United States Constitution and so on, I mean, they're all written in cursive. And, uh, like, you know, young people nowadays may not even be able to read that, um, let alone write in that. I mean, and that, I think, is a very sad thing. Um, fountain pens 
also make you when you I mean obviously if you have a fountain pen you'll be writing a lot more compared to typing on uh, a computer or on an iPad and uh, if you go to many schools now what they try to say is or what they're saying is oh we're going to become a paperless school as in every kid will come with an iPad or an um, iPhone or I something or other and uh, they'll be doing everything on their digital devices and uh, I mean that's all well and good as in yeah it is important to be able to use um, technology but a lot is lost um, when you're typing something on um, a computer you basically don't have to order your thoughts what you do is you basically just write whatever's coming in your head and then once you've written everything you adjust like you know copy and paste things and so on and so forth and uh, while many people may say that hey that is um, like you know an okay thing that's just the way the world works when you do put pen on paper what is basically happening is you have got your entire let's say you're writing a one page letter you more or less have that entire letter in your mind you've ordered it in your mind and you're basically writing it out i mean you may not consciously do that but uh, there, there are a lot of mental processes involved whereas when you type things you're not using those mental processes and because many kids now i mean this is just my opinion haven't really are not taught to put things on paper and they just type things out i mean they, they, they're not really developing parts of their brain that um, like you know the older generation had to were forced to and uh, in my opinion that could uh, explain lack of ability mental comprehension and so on that we're um, seeing nowadays um, i mean this is not to mention that uh, like you know many exams that you sit nowadays uh, e even today <laughs> they won't let you go into the exam room with a computer i mean they will get you to write things down also i have been told in many countries when you go for a job interview they will actually get you to sit down and write something and um, apparently that's something very common in France I've not been to France I don't know but uh, yeah uh, I think he, he, even here in New Zealand um, when I went for my first interview I actually did get that job mm, they actually got me to yeah write a few things I mean this was doing maths equations and so on but yeah I mean I had to actually write things down there um, and so yeah, writing is a very um, yeah, essential skill now also speaking with writing now with ballpoint pens when you're writing you have no line variation um you you can't really express yourself on paper you can't make the like things bold and and flourish your handwriting whereas with fountain pens when you put more pressure the line gets thicker and thinner depending on how you put apply pressure also the way ink behaves um, because of the drying time and so on what you'll find is some bits are not only thicker and thinner in terms of line width but some bits are darker and lighter and yeah, that is just something you cannot do with a ballpoint pen it's um, yeah, absolutely impossible Th there are many people who specialize in uh, reading handwriting and apparently when you're writing with a fountain pen um, um, these experts they can actually tell hey this person was angry or not angry and so on and so forth and uh, yeah anyway. so I, mean, I, I enjoy writing with fountain pens because you can um, yeah, express yourself um, a bit more I mean, in terms of the actual way the the words look on paper now speaking of paper before i got into fountain pens i mean uh, i just thought paper was paper and uh, how wrong was i i mean there is a world of difference between good paper and not so good paper by not so good paper i mean there there's some paper that's just not fountain pen friendly um 
what tends to happen when you uh, use fountain pens. Uh, most fountain pen people, you tend to uh, buy paper from certain brands. Um, this is uh, Rodier. Rodier is owned by a French company, Clairefontaine. Um, I may not be pronouncing them correctly. I mean, they've been making paper for, I think, over 100 years at the same location, and uh, their paper is just so smooth. Um, when you write using a fountain pen, I mean, the nib just flows um, like, you know, like butter on glass or something like that. I mean, it's, uh, it's just... Uh, yeah, absolutely amazing. Compared to if you use photocopy paper, paper what you'll find is um, the ink soaks through, it's scratchy, and so on and so forth. Um, yeah. So once you start using fountain pens, um, you'll suddenly like you know develop some appreciation for literature. Um, also, you tend to start collecting notebooks. I mean, this is a um, Lustrum notebook and like you know better notebooks what you'll find is you've got a flap at the back where you can uh, store things and pages are numbered and uh, you can also buy accessories like this is a quiver where you can actually store your fountain pen in there let's uh, do larger fountain pen so you can store a fountain pen like that um, yeah I mean this is a small one I've got some bigger ones and uh, It'll just open your eyes into um, yeah what's out there. I hope I've given you uh, some reasons. Um, I, I just cannot express the enjoyment in using a fountain pen. Um, Sean Brown, Pella Hale, and like you know many others have uh, done similar videos on um, why they like uh, fountain pens, and like you know I, I completely agree with them. It's uh, just seeing the ink dry on paper, I mean, you have to be more deliberate when you're using fountain pens. Um, yeah, it is just a thing to behold. It's um, it's a beautiful thing. I I will uh, I only use ballpoint pens when I absolutely have to. I mean, fountain pens are they're just a superior writing instrument. You feel nice uh, about using fountain pens. Um, you can personalize what you write. And uh, I mean, to me, the written word is something that's very powerful. I mean, it's um, to get a handwritten note. I mean, that is conveys so much more emotion compared to like a typed email, so on. Uh, speaking of uh, writing notes, I mean, letter writing, I mean, what you can, um, you know, many, letter writing is not a dead art, by the way, so, <laughs> with me anyway, so what you can do is you can buy, um, yeah, wax seals, and you can wax, and like, you know, all these uh, very nice things, go to the post office, put stamps, and send letters, I mean, love writing letters and receiving letters um yeah emails just don't do it i'm sorry <laughs> so yeah um i hope you've enjoyed this video um as much as i enjoy writing fountain pens using fountain pens they didn't come out right um well anyway if you happen to be in Palmerston North and you want to uh, get in touch with me and talk fountain pens, I mean, I'd absolutely love to. Just uh, last uh, weekend, a friend of mine came with uh, three fountain pens, um, a Mont Blanc Mozart, which is a very small, um, so it's uh, smaller than this uh, Mont Blanc um, fountain pen. And uh, yeah, but when you post it, it writes absolutely fine. Um, uh, once I started using it, I said, hey, uh, can I buy it? And he said, no, it'll go, it's going to be heirloom. So, I mean, that's a fountain pen that I'm going to save up for. And, uh, yeah, anyway, I could probably talk hours, um, which would bore you. But, uh, yeah, if you want to know about fountain pens, leave a comment below. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>